Hello and welcome. Today we will see some tips for preparing slides. These are more about the presentation and the format of the slides. Two important points. One is from Albert Einstein. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. We will use this principle throughout this presentation. And that is the important message that we will be conveying in this presentation. And secondly, there is an old saying, tell them what you are going to tell them, tell them and tell them what you have told them. Firstly, presentation and writing are very different. What you write is not necessarily what you present and what you present is not necessarily what you write. In the case of written material, there is plenty of time to assimilate. The readers can take as much time as they want to read and understand what you have said. However, in a presentation, the attention span is very limited. It could be as short as 5 minutes to about 10 minutes because by the time you would have gone to the next topic. In written communication, details are very important because if they have to reproduce it, they need to know it exactly as you have done it. However, in oral presentation, it is the stress and evoking interest that is important. You evoke an interest so that they come back and read your detailed material which is written up. Again, for the same reason, precision is very important in writing, whereas in presentation, it can be sketchy. Sketchy does not mean that you lose the rigor. You should tell the audience that there is rigor in it, but not convey it so explicitly. In written communication, it is important to have grammatically correct sentences and full sentences. Whereas, in presentation, whatever you write on the slides is only a guide. It is only a guide for listeners to grab a few important points they are not supposed to read it off, it is not a speaker notes, it is simply a guide. Lastly, in written communication, it is mainly verbal, whereas in oral presentation, you have much more options. You have multimedia, there is non-verbal communication, the way you look at the audience and all that is important. Let us see what are the different types of talks that are there. Talks can be broadly classified depending on the duration and the audience. Now, duration can be as small as 3 minutes, 30 minutes and mostly up to about an hour. So, I have represented duration in this vertical axis. The audience again can be varied. You could have audience who are very broad, they could come from multiple disciplines or you could have very specialized audience specific to a discipline. So, I have represented specialization from broad to specific on the horizontal axis. Now, if you see most of the talks lie along this diagonal, the shorter the talk, it is usually meant for a broad audience. The longer the talk, it is usually meant for a specific audience. However, there are exceptions. There could be some talks which are short, but for specific audience. These are usually called as sound bites. They are given as an attraction for people to come for the detailed talk. So, you present a sound bite and invite them to come to your detailed colloquium or you could have exceptions on this quadrant, which is for a very broad audience, but it is really long, maybe 20 to 30 minutes. TED talks are examples of this. Now, for some important points about how we go and uh, lay out our slides for an effective communication. It is very important to keep in mind that we should not pack a lot of information in a slide. Usually, a slide is designed to be presented for just one minute. Just pack enough information for one minute. 
that means that you should not write long sentences the sentences should be short presentation is also called as a glance media like this billboard advertisement you see here as soon as you see this you get the message tailgating is not worth it and it is all conveyed very beautifully using a picture and just one short sentence. The opposite of this had you written it, it would be a long essay of what are the advantages and disadvantage of going behind a car or a van or a truck. So, it is important to use images, pictures, cartoons and videos in a presentation. Now, all these things you do not have flexibility in writing, but in a presentation you have this flexibility to use this multimedia. Just because you are free to use pictures and cartoons does not mean we use anything, it is important that they create an impact. Now, this creates an impact, whereas this is probably a distraction, so it is something that is put up there just because it is a nice cartoon. Now, this is a very nice video or a collection of slides which uh, tells you how to avoid commonly found mistakes in presentation. So, please have a look at this when you have time. Now, coming back to the density of slides, it is important that the amount of material that goes in a slide is just sufficient for about a minute. Take a look at these two examples. In here, the presenter has used very long sentences almost as though it is their own presentation notes. Do you expect the audience to read them? Is this a document that is to be read? No, it is highly distracting. Again here, there are not so long sentences, but there is so much of information, so much of graphics, lot of connections. It is first of all not possible to do this in a minute and there are so much density and small fonts, it is not visible at far distances in the audience. Now, it is important that you keep the sentences telegraphic and terse, it does not have to be grammatically correct. In the case of equations, do not present long derivations of it, long derivations are there in papers, usually in the appendix and all that you needs to be conveyed in a presentation is possibly just the essence of it, what are the important terms, what are the different phenomena that is being captured. It is also important that when you present equations, the symbols are adequately defined within the page. This is not a paper where you can go back and refer, the audience cannot go back and refer to some equation, some symbol that you have defined 5 slides ago. It is important that you repeat it. Again keep in mind that one slide is one minute, so if you have got 15 minutes to present in a presentation, it is just about 15 slides. You must have additional material which provides the details in case somebody asks questions, but that should be after the end of the talk as a backup slide. Styles and unities are very important. Unity is something that unites the entire presentation and it gives you a feeling that this is just one presentation. Now, look at this army of marching soldiers. The unity in, in this is the uniformity in which they are marching. A presentation is more like that. There has to be unity in the layout, unity in fonts, colors and background. The layout has to be uniform across the slides, which means the title and the body. It is also important to have slide numbers and slide numbers must be clearly visible in either of the corners of the page. Some people have a fancy for using lots of different sizes of fonts, because it is so easy to change fonts but as a good design practice use no more than two fonts and choose nice beautiful fonts for your presentation. All capitals has to be avoided on in all costs, all capitals are very difficult to read. Colors, again 
just as fonts it's so easy to change colors so if you really like lot of colors just stick to gray background again needs to be simple some people tend to have lots of flowery and gradation backgrounds which is slightly distracting keep it simple white for example file formats are also very important when you decide to choose how you are going to present it's better to avoid ppt or other specific formats if you are not going to use your own laptop or tablets to make the presentation because you will notice that once you are taking formats such as ppt to another presentation or another computer it's going to most likely change the way it is being displayed use pdf which is usually compatible in all display projectors in spite of that it's very important that you check the display on the actual setup so if this is your conference setup make sure you check for the misplaced text equations are being properly displayed and formatted the borders are right it's not just getting cut somewhere the colors are visible the video is playing and particularly if the fonts and the colors are visible right at the back of the auditorium it's important to give the audience a feel that you have taken care that they are able to read what you have presented finally some characteristics of good talks good talks are well rehearsed it's almost like a theatrical presentation it also means it's got a well written script a transcript of a talk which you see as a subtitle or separately along with this video comes usually after the talk but a well prepared talk usually has a script written before the talk and that is well rehearsed and presented it's important to have a very nice gripping story that captivates the audience that engages them during the talk and after the talk it leaves them with some thought provoking ideas finally it's good to have one important take home message for the entire talk that's usually more than sufficient now what is the important take home message of this talk keep it simple thank you for listening